What's up everybody? I'm sitting down low today because the wind is blowing, there's a storm coming in, and we are going to get hammered with some snow. Yeah, for real. <sighs> but that's okay. Today I'm just going to cover off a couple of things. Emails that I get, uh, comments that might come through, uh, things like that. Really with the big question of, did I do damage or did I kill my lawn? And I'm also going to show a couple of things that can happen, but it's okay and you're gonna get through it. So let's go ahead and roll that intro. What's up, everybody? so random you bring the darkness to the lights play the atom i ignore the fact that this will never last your words come out so soothing that i forget that this thing is confusing having such a blast but don't ask where my head is at because i'm cruising through the rush of us i don't care about love just need your touch Should have been my vice, 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 vice. I'm all about your vibe, vibe, vibe. Me and you got that good, yeah. But I'm running like I'm lost in the woods, yeah. I don't really care, cause I just like it here. Me and you can't get enough, no, you know, acted, but I know this is a bluff, though. Having such a blast, but don't ask where my head is at. Cause I'm cruising through the rush of us. I don't care about love, just need your touch. Once you to be my vice. Okay, so we're gonna go walk around on my lawn in a second here, and I just need to tell a story real quick. If you are subscribed and you follow and get notifications and stuff, there's a community tab where I sometimes post pictures. So last week was my daughter's 11th birthday, and we had a party back here on the lawn, had a massive slip and slide, and I wanted to cut the grass a couple days prior and get it prepped for this thing. Well, turns out I could not get any of my push reels through the grass. It was too thick. It was too bad. So uh, I got my John Deere out, my greens mower, and I decided to just run through the whole thing and I scalped the living crap out of it down to brown in a lot of places because I'd been letting it grow up a little bit higher. So it's going through a reset at the moment and it's coming along pretty good and I'll show you the difference between the color and cutting out the color and now resetting it to its low height. So I'm back down to 3 eighths of an inch back here and it, it's doing okay, it's definitely under stress. So that's gonna lead me to my first thing. Last year I did a video called Don't Panic. It's right here, you can watch it if you want to. I had a lot of fun making that one. I wanna just really reiterate that statement, don't panic. So I cut all my grass down, it's super short, it's brown in areas, it's down to the nubs, and the reason it did that is just because the branching height changed as I was letting it grow up and be a little bit taller. I was cutting it between about an inch and an inch and three quarters. I'm not exactly sure what the setting was on my Scott's reel mower, but it was a little higher than I normally go. Part of that was just because it's been so incredibly dry here, and we're just barely starting to get some good moisture. It's gonna come through the next three days, so that's cool. Everything's gonna get resaturated, it'll look great. So today I cut it down again, I cut it yesterday, I cut it the day before. I've been going across it every single day and I'm still getting clippings off of it because it's just growing at a really good pace. So, let's look at that. We'll go out onto the lawn real quick. I'll show you some of the bad spots. And again, remember, don't panic. So let's start right here. As you can see, I cut way down into the base of the grass, down into the stalk below its existing branching height. So as I let the bluegrass grow up, it would form more of a stem, like a stalk in here, and then it would start a new branching height. And I'll show you this right here. So right here is a great example. We have a sheath and you can see 
two grass blades are actually inside there that are going to pop up. That's what's actually coming out of this and it's now been cut off, so that's fine. But as you can see here, there's this color down underneath and that is what gives it this kind of pale brownish hue and the grass is going to have to reset to its new branching height again. So yeah, it doesn't look good, um, but it's really just a hard reset. So for a lot of people, and this is where I really want to get uh, some clarity for everyone, mowing heights really do matter. Mowing frequency really does matter and it's important to your overall turf health because if you're not doing it enough and you're taking too much out of the plant, it will live under constant stress, which you really don't want to do. So it is important to make sure that you're getting out on a regular basis, you're cutting the grass just off a little. Again, there's that one third rule. I break that rule all the time. I'm okay with living with a little bit of stress on the turf, but for the most part, I try not to. And when you're cutting grass this short, you have to mow every day or every other day. You know, I've stated that before. So if you continue to do that, if you continue to cut too much out of the turf, you will ultimately run into some issues. You will have open spaces and you will have the ability for weeds to get in and potential higher stress later in the season. So it is very, very important to make sure that you're cutting regularly and you're not cutting too much off the grass. And I do get a lot of pictures that show uh, severe stress by the way somebody mowed. They're worried they killed the grass. You didn't kill the grass, you gave it a hard reset. So now I'm gonna show you something else, which again, people wonder what's the disease, what's this, what's that, and it's a, just a common thing that's easy to correct and uh, nothing to worry about. Okay, so take a look at this right here. This is something else that people really tend to worry about. Now there's two things happening in here right now. There is some seeding, nothing to worry about. Grass is supposed to grow and reproduce and that's part of life. But then there's another thing and that is the super fray. This is problematic for your turf. The reason this looks like this is because of my super crappy string trimmer that I have. It does not have enough power, it does not cut well, and it really just rips and shreds and tears the grass apart, and it absolutely looks like garbage. So this is another one. You could also, you know, people get scared about and they're, they think there's something wrong with their grass, but there's nothing wrong with the grass. There's actually something wrong with your equipment. Sorry, you know, as time goes on, equipment does tend to fail. So that, that's something else. So obviously the quickest thing that you can do if you're gonna fix this, you've got to sharpen up what you've got or you've gotta get freaking higher rotations on your string trimmer, not a super slow crappy one like mine. That's pretty simple. But mower blades do this all the time. So make sure that your blades are sharp, you get a nice clean cut, you know, my real mower cuts so well, such a nice tight cut, and this is with my push mower. It never frays, and that's one of the reasons that the color stays so good. So, let me show you what the color looked like before I cut it out. Okay, check this out. So, this area is relatively undisturbed. It's at the bottom of the slide. It is super, super dark green, and it is incredibly thick. And this is what everything was looking like before I ran across it. So I put my, my little reel mower today, I took it through here and I cut all of that out of it. And this is again, a great example of why you see this sort of liminess happen when you go too short. So look how much I cut off, first of all. See, notice where that branching height is. Okay, so that's like thinning the lawn out by two right there and getting down into the stalks, which are going to look more like, let's find one here, this. So this was cut off, about two inches was cut off, and this is where you can see the color change down below because all of this is obviously photosynthesizing, closer to the sun, catching more, the stuff down below is going to be shaded and it's not really going to have the opportunity to get the color like the upper blades do. So just in this small area, there's a major difference between where it's not been cut yet, where I left it long, just for this example, and where it has been, and the total color between the two at the lower heights. So the next thing I wanna show you here, and again, this is one of those don't panic situations. When I had my spray service in Reno, one of the biggest calls that I got was, 
is it a fungus, is it this, is it that, is it that, when I would come out to take a look at a new customer's lawn. And 99 times out of 100, it was purely an irrigation issue, or as I would call it, an irrigation shadow. So pretty easy to see, pretty easy to spot. But this area right here is on a slight slope, okay? And when I put out my uh, sprinklers and set them here, this spot doesn't really get good coverage. So it's, it's just here along the fence line. I can fix it with just some supplemental water, but this area is notorious for drying out. Plus, it has the longest day's exposure as the sun comes across before it gets to the trees. So this area really does bake out. And, you know, it's maybe five or 10 square feet. It's not a big deal. But if I want everything to look uniform and clean, then I need to be really monitoring how my water is getting onto these spots. So with bluegrass, when it starts to get stressed, and remember I said it's really hot, you get these little clumps, it sort of starts to protect itself and it won't spread. So the energy goes into sort of a heart. It's almost as if like when we go into hypothermia, we ditch some of our extremities so that we can preserve a core here. So that's what happens and you get these little spaces. And we don't really want that to happen because if I've got soil showing here like this, again, this is a potential invasion point and I do not want that. So I need to make sure that my irrigation is top notch, that I'm running this when it needs to be run and I'm getting the most appropriate amount of water. So, you know, we could do a whole video on the tuna can thing. If you don't know what that is, there's a bunch of them out there, but I can tell you this. For one of my impact sprinklers, if I run it and it covers the whole lawn, I get about a quarter of an inch on an hour of running that thing. So, you know, it might seem like it's getting a ton of water with your timer, but you might not be getting out as much as you think. So it's good to measure that out and just make sure you know what you got. One thing I haven't really done a whole lot of this year that I, I'm going to do right now, uh, one of the reasons that I was letting the grass grow up a little bit higher is I wanted to push a little more root again since it was uh, very dry in a very early season. So I'm going to just do a little dig right here and let's just check out what everything's looking like underground. Looking awesome, that's how it's looking. Check out this density here. Okay, so the next thing I wanna show you is improper chemical application. This is kind of a biggie. But before we do, I'm just going to shoot over the fence here and show you what's happening on one of the project lawns. Now the garden's coming in really well. There's some weeds that need to be pulled. It's not a big deal, but it's moving along, especially with our crazy weather. But the lawn over here is just absolutely going off. And uh, this was actually cut a few days ago with the Scott's reel mower that I have. And it's, it's gonna be, have to be cut again, but his mower was broken down, so he used it. The color is awesome, uh, cutting it up a little high. The areas where uh, we had more compaction have almost gone away. I'll show you those in a second. So it's coming along really, really well. So just over my shoulder here, this is that area where it's pretty high traffic that I pointed out in that previous video, and you can check the link right here to go look at that. That thing has come in really, really well. And again, this has only had one application of Aerate, one application of 1801, and one application of RGS. And that was uh, five or six weeks ago on the um, 1801. So this is a pretty common thing. And, you know, I would like to do everything in my power, which is limited, obviously, to help this not happen. Now, basically, there are a couple of weeds in here, and um, Danny went and picked up some weed killer, uh, just a generic something to put down here. Um, but without having 
the knowledge of what he really needed to look for, he obviously got a non-selective herbicide and burned the crap out of the grass. Now, there are way, way worse scenarios uh, that I've seen where complete lawns are torched by bad application. And this is fixable, right? But I, you know, I have guys who own companies who call me and ask me questions about like we had a, a, a problem or, or a miss or you know, a, there wasn't a tank cleaned out and somebody threw glyphosate down. What can we do to flush it out? Well, reality is this is like five or 10 bucks worth of sod and doing a quick cut, laying it in there, you're gonna recover everything way faster than trying to sit and flush and encourage grass growth. So unless you're having to deal, and some people do, complete replacement of lawns, um, it's almost better to just do a quick cut out and repair, patch repair. Just why waste? Why waste time? Why not just get it done? So it's very important. It's very important to read the labels, know your target pest, and go after it with the correct product. Uh, bottom line, just make sure you're getting the right chemical out in the right place if you're going to do it. Now one thing I want to talk about real quick about that application of chemical that was in the wrong spot. Again, that's something that I, I never like to see and it happens a lot and it's pretty common and even when I shot that video uh, last week when Katie asked that question about why can't we just pour in the chemical and, and have that be that, it, you know, that's that's pretty common. That's that's what a lot of people just think. You can just throw it down and everything's gonna be fine. But I also see that with over application of fertilizer. It's pretty common for somebody to have just a spreader and they just fill the spreader and they just run until the spreader's empty and you get either a tremendous growth result or you get a burn or you cause damage because there's something else in there and you fully over applied something that is actually something i am very passionate about and making sure that precision is being used and uh, i am working on some very special things right now that will be revealed hopefully in about the next six months that are absolute game changers in that regard all right so this is really just it's a true getting back to basics video. And I think it's really important for a lot of people to just remember that there's quite a few people who are just starting out and who are joining this channel. And so sometimes you're gonna see me revamp some of this stuff just because it helps to build the confidence of the applicator or the mower, the homeowner, whoever it might be, just to get back into sort of a groove. There's just common things that happen because of maybe bad irrigation, uh, chemical application that wasn't done right, mowing not being done right, dull blades. Those are just really simple ways that can ultimately lead to disease. Those are sort of gateway entry points into the need for chemical supplementation. And again, I'm not against that. That happens, that's part of it. But my goal in my professional realm has been to do as much as we can with nutrition first, and then we kind of work on whatever ancillary things there might be. And for those of you out there who are just joining, just to be clear, again, I do own Green County Fertilizer Company, and I think there's a lot of people that don't really understand exactly uh, what we do as a company. So I'm gonna just take a quick moment to explain that. So we have... So we have many birds, magpies. We have many thousands of customers in our database, lawn care companies all across the country that have been on our program for many, 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 many years. Now, we build programs based on the needs of the applicator or the owner. So not everybody is 100% on our products and we don't need that. We provide, uh, we fill in holes in certain programs to make their program more efficient. Uh, and obviously we do a lot with like heavier liquid nutrition. Aside from that, we actually supply a lot of other materials in bulk that I don't think really anybody knows about because it's just a service that we offer as well as selling chemicals and basically a full supply house for really any need in the turf industry. So I do spend a lot of my time working on programs for people and building out an easy to follow system for professional companies. From the homeowner standpoint, if you watch this, 
My suggestion to you is to just follow along when I'm doing applications if you're going to try to do something very similar to what I'm up to. Now, again, a lot of this has to do with knowing your property. I have soil tests done on mine. I know what's in there. I know what I can and can't do. I know what it needs. And I do like to experiment with it from time to time as well. So having that little bit of background history really helps me and it can really help you. Now, again, not everybody knows how to read a soil test and I would love to help with that. So um, on the Loncology store, for a few bucks, I will fully send you a complete breakdown of your soil report. I'm not doing the testing. You gotta send it to a lab and you gotta make sure you get everything done. So you can pick who you wanna go to. I have specific people that I like to use and I'll put links down below so that you can take a look at that. But I'll go through and I'll step things out and I will have products that I manufacture that you can get from one of our suppliers. I will put stuff on there that you can get from local supply houses. I will have sort of a whole uh, running recipe for you to be able to take your lawn up and have it be what you really dream it could be. In closing, I wanted to just share a couple of uh, cool emails that I've gotten and um, just say thank you to, to the people who've sent them in show you some pictures of some stuff and uh, just give you kind of a quick rundown of what that looks like. Uh, Gene sent this in to me. Gene has been watching this for a while and uh, he has taken this area in the, his backyard that he was never really able to grow turf on and over the last two years he's really focused on the program and following along and, and really just nailing it and doing the right thing. He managed to uh, get a complete uh, rehab renovation done on it where the grass took and it's beautiful and it's gorgeous and I just want to say thanks Gene for sending this in it's super cool to see so I just want to invite anybody if you've got stories to share pictures whatever and you want to send me an email answers at longcology.com I'd love to put them up here and just showcase uh, what some of y'all are doing out there I think it's pretty pretty impressive what what people are accomplishing and uh, as always you know send your comments, send your questions, do all of that. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer them and uh, really help you get along further and more comfortable and confident in your lawn journey. So that is all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you so much for supporting Green County Fertilizer Company. We, I, my family, all very much appreciate you. I'll talk to you real soon. See ya.